Hey everybody, it's Mr. Fouts, and we are back with another science read. Today is Pluto's Secret, an icy world's tale of discovery, by Margaret Weidekamp with David Dvorkin, and illustrated by Diane Kidd. For as long as the solar system has been the solar system, and Earth has been Earth, we put a way out there on the side. There has been a little icy world circling the sun, farther away than any of the planets. This icy world had a secret, a clue about something that exists in the solar system and the universe. But for a long time, no one on Earth could see this icy world. It was too far away and not bright enough to be seen in the sky, and so no one learned its secret. wonder what it was. Make a prediction and see if you can figure out what it was before they get to it in the book. The icy world didn't mind. It was busy dancing with its moons. Cha-cha, cha-cha-cha. We've got Pluto, Charon, Nix, Hydra, and P4 and P5, I guess they haven't given those moons names yet. I wonder if by the time I'm reading this, those moons do have names. And if so, I wonder what they are. So there he is, thinking about it, calculating. Ah, I guess that must be Percival Lowell. In the early 1900s, Percival Lowell, a very wealthy man from Boston, decided to look for a ninth planet. He knew that eight planets went around the sun. They were Mercury, Venus, Mars... Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and of course Earth, the planet that Percival was standing on, along with other astronomers, or people who study the universe and how it works, Percival believed that something was pulling on the paths, or the orbits, of Uranus and Neptune. He'd already built the Lowell Observatory in Arizona to study Mars. Now he ordered his staff of astronomers to search for a new planet beyond Neptune. What is out there, he asked. There must be another planet, a great big one, a bully that's causing all this trouble, that's bothering Uranus and Neptune, was Percival's answer to himself. I shall call this mysterious planet Planet X. Planet X, a great big one, thought the little icy world. That's not right. Wait until they see how lightly I dance with my moon, Sharon, the tiny dots, Nix, and Hydra, and the other little ones. Besides, I'm not bothering anyone. This icy world kept doing what it liked to do, spin on its side. Zoom, zoom, zoom. That spinning, of course, we would call rotating. Percival's astronomers looked and looked for Planet X. After Percival died in 1916, they looked even harder. They wanted to prove that Percival had been right. In the late 1920s, the Lowell Observatory hired a young fellow named Clyde Tombaugh to keep on searching. With a powerful new telescopic camera, Clyde took pictures of the night sky where he was told the new planet might be. Finally, in 1930, he found something. And I like that they tried to recreate the actual photographic images that he took so you can see how hard his job was locating tiny little Pluto within all of those other stars. In one of the pictures, Clyde saw a very small dot among thousands of other dots of many sizes, the stars. A few days later, another picture of the same area showed the same dot, but this time it was in a different place. Clyde knew that planets do that. They appear to move among the stars. The word planet comes from the Greek word for wanderer. Hello, Earth, said the tiny world. But Clyde couldn't hear as he was very, very far away. I have found Planet X, Clyde said. There's a ninth planet in our solar system, declared Lowell's astronomers on March 13, 1930. They wanted to tell everyone the exciting news on what would have been Percival Lowell's birthday. People from all over the world suggested names for the new planet. What about Minerva? No, said the astronomers. Certainly not, thought the icy little world. What about Cronus? 
Nope, said the astronomers. He hikes, said the icy world. That's not me. Zeus? Atlas? Lowell? No, 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 said the astronomers. Yuck, thought the little world. Wonder why they eventually decided on Pluto. Hey, maybe they'll tell us. Then, 11-year-old Venetia Burney from Oxford, England, suggested the name Pluto. Because, said Venetia, whose class had studied the Greek and Roman gods as well as the solar system, Pluto is the Roman god of the dark underworld. The new little planet is so far from the sun that it must be a cold, dark place, too. I like that, thought the icy world, which was now named Pluto. And there's a picture of Pluto the Roman god along with Venetia. That'd be cool to suggest a name for a planet. But a planet, Pluto thought, just like the other planets? That's not correct. None of the other planets are as little as I am. And the other planets have very ordinary flat orbits around the sun like a tabletop. My orbit is much more fun. It tips up like a slide in the playground. And we saw that in the first picture in the first page of the book, but they're showing it again here. I think it's tilted at about a 27 degree angle. The astronomers soon learned that Pluto did not always stay in its place. Sometimes it even switched places with Neptune, coming closer to the sun than Neptune did. And that's what it did from 1979 to 1999 when I was born. Pluto was the eighth planet and Neptune was the ninth planet. So that is kind of weird. Hey, yelled the astronomers, planets cannot do that. Well, I can, and I do, Pluto giggled. Remember, the icy world Pluto had a secret, a clue about what exists at the outer edges of the solar system and across the universe. You still have not figured me out, sang Pluto. Keep trying. I wonder what its secret is. Have you thought of something yet? Many years after Clyde Tombaugh first found Pluto, when astronomers were looking at the icy world with newer, more powerful telescopes, they saw that it was not alone. Pluto had friends in orbits very much like its own. This meant that there were other icy worlds. Some of Pluto's friends were just about as big as it was. And that's the Kuiper Belt. It's just like the asteroid belt that's between Mars and Jupiter, but it's outside of Neptune. Some people call these things trans-Neptunian objects. Say cheese, Pluto told his friends as the various high-powered telescopes took their pictures of Eris and Haumea and Quawar. Astronomers named the area where these new objects orbited the Kuiper Belt, after the astronomer who first predicted it, Gerard Kuiper. Rhymes with Piper. The Kuiper Belt was a whole new part of the solar system. Now you're getting closer, Pluto smiled. You're on the right track. Oh, Pluto, the astronomers sighed. You're not like the other planets. We sometimes wonder if you should even be called a planet. And then they thought, hmm, what exactly is a planet? Amazingly, no one had ever set up rules about what a planet was or was not. In 2006, because of Pluto, the astronomers voted on a definition. Planets have to orbit the sun, the astronomers decided. I go around the sun in an orbit thought Pluto. Planets have to be round like a ball, said the astronomers. I'm round, Pluto thought. Each planet has to be alone in its orbit. But my friends are with me. We all go around the sun in the Kuiper belt. Then Pluto is not a planet, the astronomers declared. Bingo! And some people were mad about that because they liked Pluto and they wanted it to stay a planet. Yep. Some people were sad that Pluto was not called a planet anymore, but Pluto didn't mind. It liked orbiting with its friends. You figured it out, Pluto reassured them. I'm not a planet. I'm the first example of something new. I'm one of many icy worlds on the edge of the solar system. Pluto thought that it was fun that so many people were wondering about what to call it now. Perhaps dwarf planet? Or maybe Kuiper Belt Object? I'm not worried. Whatever you call me, I'm fine out here, said Pluto.
But Pluto held clues to more than just our solar system. As astronomers looked for planets around other stars, they saw bands of icy worlds around other stars, too. Ah, my secret is out, said Pluto. Not only do I have friends here, but there are also bands of icy worlds just like me around other stars all over the universe. Pluto had helped astronomers to define what a planet is, and also to recognize the icy worlds around other stars. In 2015, the New Horizons spacecraft will be Pluto's first visitor from Earth. And of course, now it's already been there and taken some great pictures. You should go look them up on NASA's website if you haven't seen them already. I can't wait, says Pluto. I may even have some other secrets to reveal. Get ready. Cha, cha, cha. Oh, great. So here's some images of Clyde Tombaugh and the Lowell Observatory in Arizona. There are the photographic images that he saw. That must have been really hard to find Pluto and all that stuff. And there's a picture of Venetia, who gave Pluto its name. We've got a who's who that gives you information about each planet in the solar system. Feel free to pause the video now or on the page before if you want to read the more, some more about them. There's a glossary of words that you may not have known. And there's a note from the author, so I'm going to read that. In 2006, the scientists of the International Astronomical Union, IAU, the worldwide organization that decides the names and rules of astronomy, gathered in Prague, Czech Republic, for their regular meeting. The astronomers faced a historic decision. Discoveries of icy worlds in the region of space occupied by Pluto had raised questions. If Pluto was a planet, were these other bodies also planets? And if they were not, how could Pluto continue to be one? For the first time, astronomers voted on the exact definition of a planet. People had always assumed that they knew what a planet was, much as people know what a continent is, but there was no official definition. As a result, Pluto was removed from the list of planets that so many school children had memorized for decades. Instead, the IAU declared that Pluto was a dwarf planet. We're living in the golden age of astronomy. Using new instruments, astronomers are making new discoveries and improving what we know on a daily basis. All that change is a part of science, the search for new knowledge. Scientists will continue to uncover the secrets of Pluto and the rest of the universe for years to come. And then there's some suggested reading of other books, bibliography of books and journals and websites. And again, feel free to pause the video here to check these out in greater detail. And of course, an index. And even more. Thank you so much for coming with me on this reading journey. I look forward to seeing you again next time.